Hello and welcome to Talk to Your Health. I'm your host, Dr. Derek De Silva. It's Autism Awareness Month, so coming up later in the show, we'll talk about the disorder and an unconventional way of treating it. But first, something that can be much more lethal, brain cancer. Treating tumors of the brain is a very fragile science, and the likelihood of certain tumors recurring even after surgery and chemotherapy is typically on the high side. There's a clinical trial underway right here in New Jersey to test a new treatment for the most persistent of those tumors. Dr. Joseph Landolfi is the director of neuro-oncology at JFK Brain Tumor Center. Also with us is Jim Matzel, who was diagnosed with malignant glioma in 2001 and is currently receiving the new treatment we want to talk about today. Both of you, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. So, Doctor, tell us first of all what a glioma is. So a glioma is a tumor that arises from the sort of the scaffolding of the brain. It kind of holds the neurons in place. And what happens is there's growth of a particular glioma cell and there are various types of gliomas, some that look like stars that we call astrocytes and others that look like a fried egg that we call oligocytes and they just grow in an abnormal pace to create a tumor and for James and for the clinical trial we're talking about high-grade gliomas, gliomas that are more malignant and synonymous with cancer. Now ha ha relate this to something that uh, to the brain cancer that Ted Kennedy had. So Ted Kennedy had a glioblastoma, which is a grade four glioma. Uh, the trial, and in James's case, the glioma is a grade three. And it's just based on levels of aggressiveness. The grade four is the most common and the most aggressive, more common over the age of 50 or 60. We see the grade three is about a decade younger. And, and, and Jim, what, 2001, I believe we said you were diagnosed. What happened back then? Well, I, I was home watching TV. My, my dad, my father came down. He saw that I was twitching and moving around, and and I would not. I would be talking, but the, the words wouldn't come out. And so he took me to to the doctor. He told me, "I want you." go to the hospital now okay and I went to the hospital and that's when the diagnosis was yeah. made doctor I would imagine he had an MRI or a CAT scan or something like that done and is that yeah, where you picked absolutely, this up? Absolutely yeah it was picked up on an MRI scan and once the tumor was identified uh, he saw neurosurgery. Typically how are these tumors treated? The standard of care is surgery if surgery can be done because you want to remove as much as possible if it's possible followed by radiation and chemotherapy given at the same time and then followed by chemotherapy given every month. And Jim, what did you receive? Did you receive both of those? Did you receive radiation? Did you receive yep. chemotherapy? Chemo, it feels like I've done it all. Okay, and, and I believe you had quite a few treatments, right? You've had five yeah. different treatments? Yeah, or I've, five different I've had a total of four years of chemo. I've gone through radiation. I've, it feels like I've done it all. Yeah. Well, you look great. I mean, you really look great. You really look great, and, and, and it looks like things are working. So what's new here, Dr. Landolf? I mean, we're, we're talking about a new treatment. We're talking about new therapy. We've actually got some, some, some uh, video that we'd like to show, and if you could just talk to us a little bit about what we're going to see here. Tell us what's happening. So basically we're using the TOCA 511, which is a, in the name of the retrovirus. And this virus is, at the time of surgery, injected into the surrounding tissue. The TOCA 511, or this bus that sort of gets this piggyback of genetic material and plants it into the tumor cell, it only infects the tumor cell. It does not infect normal brain. And as the tumor cell divides, the genetic material will divide with it. The patient, about seven weeks later, will then take a capsule the capsule is an antifungal agent that's been around for 30 years called 5-FC, relatively benign. And in the tumor cell, that 5-FC is converted into 5-FU, a potent chemotherapy. So let me understand this. What, what, when you go in to do the surgery, you inject a retrovirus. You inject a virus into the tumor? We remove the tumor. The surgeon removes the tumor. And in the surrounding tissue from which the tumor was removed, all around the periphery we make injections of the retrovirus. What does that do? The retrovirus infects the tumor cells that are left behind. So the and, reason it, and it infects them and kills them? It infects them and then they take the chemotherapy pills and the goal of the study is to look at the safety and the tolerability uh, 
but the, the theory is that, yes, it will cause cell death. Now, Jim, you've had this done? Yeah. And how long ago was it done? Oof. February 28th. Fe February, Feb yeah. Just in February. And, and what are we looking for here, Dr. Landolfi? Well, right now, Jim just started the capsules. So um, what we're looking for is to see that his tumor doesn't grow back as it's been doing over the last 11 years, uh, but also to make sure he tolerates everything well. And he's been a model patient, and uh, he's plays basketball. He, yeah. You okay. know, he's doing terrific. And he hasn't had any side effects from the capsules. That was going to be my next, that my next yeah. question. Any side effects? No, nothing. Uh, it, it, it's, been, it's been better than my uh, previous. Okay. And that, is that typically know? what we see, Dr. Landoffi? Is that there are Well, based minimal? on the trials that have been done so far, most of the, the side effects are gastrointestinal and they are minimal, but when they occur, we make adjustments in the doses that the patient gets. Is there any kind of predictors? Is there a genetic predisposition? Do we, can we predict some of these tumors? We can't predict who was going to get them. Everybody has genes in their body. Some are turned on, some are turned off, as you know, and tumors develop. For the individual tumors, we do have predictors uh, of the tumors themselves. In the case of Jim's, there's two fingerprints, genetic markers, chromosomes 1P and 19Q, that can actually predict response to therapy and survival. And, and what about the whole idea of this compared to conventional therapies? I guess, is that why you're doing the study? We were doing the study because the conventional therapies certainly have come a long way over the last five years, but the tumors recur because there are microscopic cells that are interdispersed between normal brain cells that can't be removed, and they grow back. And we need other modalities, whether it's uh, the retrovirus or immune therapies, such as vaccines, which we're mm -hmm. also doing, or novel therapies like electrical devices, uh, to try to prevent the tumors from coming back. Mm -hmm. So, Jim, you're, you're, you're feeling good, things are going well, you're active, and what are you hoping here? What are you hoping for? Uh, I'm, I'm hoping it, it, it'll work, so it'll help me, and hopefully it'll help uh, a lot of other people down, down the road. And is that, is, that's what we're looking at here goal-wise. What are your endpoints of this study, obviously? Safety and tolerability, it's a phase one study. Uh, there are two arms. One arm that's been going on for about a year is injecting it without removing tumor. This is mm -hmm. the arm where the tumor's removed, and at JFK, we did the, uh, the first such patient. Excellent. Jim is it, first yeah. one yeah. in the Jim world. Is. Wow, <laughs> Jim, good luck to you. God bless you, thank and you. we wish you all the best. Dr. Landolfi, thank you very much. Thank Keep you. up the great work. Stay with us on 12 to your health.